Hello space fans and welcome to Your Sky Tonight for July 27th, 2017. I'm Tony Darnell from deepastronomy.space. Tonight, once again, as the sun sets low in the in the western sky at around 8:50 or almost 9 o'clock tonight eastern time, we can begin to see some of the interesting alignments that are happening here. We can already still see, as we have in the previous nights, the planet Mercury peeking out and bathing in the glow of the sun as it sets low in the west. And we can also see the small dot of the Hubble Space Telescope. It's making another appearance tonight. Now the best way to see the Hubble Space Telescope is to try and go out maybe where there's a long or a large field or maybe a western facing coastline where you're not obstructed by trees because the Hubble will not get very high in the sky and it'll only be visible for about five or ten minutes this evening just after sunset. So it is up and it's making an appearance but you don't want to be somewhere where there's lots of trees blocking your western horizon. So as the sun gets a little bit as the sun gets a little bit lower in the sky and the and the sky gets darker, we can begin to see some really bright objects appearing. We already see the beautiful crescent moon making its way westward as it sets behind the sun. And because it lies on the ecliptic along with the planet Jupiter and Saturn, we can also see some bright stars appearing near it. The star Spica, for example, and higher overhead is the sun Arcturus. And Arcturus, one of the easiest ways to find it is by, by, the, by an old mnemonic where if you look for the Big Dipper, you look for the handle of the Big Dipper, and then you follow the arc of the handle, and you arc to Arcturus. That's the easiest way to find this very bright star. But it's not that you don't really need the Big Dipper to see it at all. It is the fourth brightest star in the sky. It's 37 light years away, and this star is dying. It is a red giant star, 7 billion years old. It's only about 1.1 1, 1 .1 times more massive than our own sun, but it's 25 times its diameter. It's also 170 times more luminous. All of the hydrogen, all of the core hydrogen in this star has been used up. And this is how our sun will die in some 5 billion years. Our, as the hydrogen fuel is used up in our sun, it will expand 25 times its current diameter and go out probably past, estimates are, past the orbit of Mars. So this will get very large and our sun will follow Arcturus to its grave. Another very interesting star is after you have arced to Arcturus using the Big Dipper, now you can spike to Spica, go straight down toward the southwest, and you will see the 16th brightest star in the sky, Spica. Spica is 250 light years away, and it is a binary star. And a binary star is where there are two stars orbiting around each other. But these stars are so close together that they that the gravity is pulling them in such a way that they are egg-shaped rather than spherical. Now because of its location on the ecliptic here, every, once in a while the moon will come and occult the light from Spica. That's when the moon moves in front of that star. And when that happens, they are able to make measurements of the size of the moon and all other kinds of interesting things. So tonight when you go out, just after dusk in the northern hemisphere, look to the southwest again and you'll see the beautiful crescent moon followed by Jupiter, followed by the binary star Spica. High overhead is the star known as Arcturus and it is a harbinger of things to come for our own sun. Well, that is it for tonight, space fans. Thank you all for listening. And as always, keep looking up.